Hey guys, it's Miss Casey with my little cat, Stelita. Say hi, Stella. Meow. Anyways, um, it's Miss Casey, and for today, um, our activity is going to be another cultural reading. The place that we're going to be going to is Puerto Rico. And we're going to be going to Puerto Rico because it's May, and around this time last year, I was in Puerto Rico with my family. And so during this time of quarantine, being at home, it kind of got me missing my homeland. And I just kind of wanted to get back into the roots of it and a little bit of the culture of Puerto Rico since we're so um, isolated here in America. So um, just for those of you who may not know, I'm gonna go ahead and get our map out here. Sorry, our globe um, to see where Puerto Rico even is. So North America right here us we are on the east coast we're here pennsylvania philadelphia and puerto rico is a tiny island right here this orange sorry <laughs> this green i don't know where i saw orange this green little island right here i don't know if it's very clear i'm sorry if it's not but that is where puerto rico is in the caribbean sea the capital of puerto rico is san juan which is actually where i was born and the cultural reading that we're going to be doing today is a traditional Puerto Rican folk tale um, called Juan Bobo's Pot. So before we begin to read our story of Juan Bobo's Pot, I kind of want to dive into the character a little bit so you guys can have some background information of who he even is. So Juan Bobo is a popular, super popular character in Puerto Rican culture, um, especially in the folk tales, there are clearly stories about him. There are songs, um, books, just so many things around Juan Bobo. And his significance within the Puerto Rican culture is pretty much to teach children like most folk tales are supposed to do. So even though he's a character that is not very bright in the head, and gets himself into so many situations and trouble sometimes. Um, he always, there's always a lesson behind the folktale. So I just thought that was so interesting and I just wanted to share because most of us probably have heard stories of Juan Bobo, but it's like, who is, who is this guy? Like who, why is he so important in the Puerto Rican culture? And like I just said, it's pretty much because his stories, um, are so fun but they also have a lesson behind them um specifically for the puerto rican culture that that's why it's so popular and most of the time um those stories even preserve some of the culture of puerto rico like having his stories being told over and over again about specific events kind of captures some of the culture of puerto rico and keeps it alive in a sense so yeah so now we're gonna go ahead and start reading the story all right, so I was able to access the story through a newspaper um, website called Go San Angelo, which is based in San Angelo, Texas. So they were able to post the actual story of Juan Bobo's Pot. Um, on the website, it says it's adapted by Amy Friedman and illustrated by Jillian Gilliland. So we're going to go ahead and begin. All right, so once upon a time... On the island of Puerto Rico, there lived a boy named Juan Bobo. Well, his name was Juan, but he was called Juan Bobo because he was a foolish boy. He had a huge heart, full of generosity and sweetness. Alas, the heart was not what he used when he was making decisions about life. For that, he used his head. And Juan Bobo's head? Well, let's just say his head was not quite as full as his heart. One day, Juan Bobo's mother invited friends for dinner. I'll make a nice big chicken stew, she said to Juan Bobo. She had the chicken and she had the rice, but she didn't have a large enough pot. Juan Bobo, she said, go to your grandmother's house and borrow her biggest pot. Hurry now so I can make my stew. Juan Bobo loved chicken stew, so naturally he was glad to help. He ran outside and up the hill towards his grandmother's house. As he ran, he could almost taste that stew, and he could see the pot, the big three-legged iron pot, round and sturdy. He had eaten many stews, 
cooked in that pot. When he reached his grandmother's house, he went straight to the cupboard where she kept the pot. He lifted it up on his shoulder and called, Thank you, grandmother, before heading for home. Home wasn't far, but that pot was heavy and the day was hot. Before long, sweat was pouring down Juan Bobo's face and his shoulder hurt and his feet were tired and his breath was becoming short. I think I'll rest a while, he said out loud. So he stopped and put the pot on the ground. He stood there catching his breath, looking at that pot, and suddenly he noticed those three legs. Hey, he said, you have three legs and I only have two. Why should I carry you? The very idea that a boy with two legs had to carry a pot with three legs made no sense to Juan Bobo. Of course it didn't, because sense was not what Juan Bobo usually made. <laughs> he continued to stare at the pot and he began to feel angry. You lazy pot, he said at last. Why don't you walk on your own? Come, we'll race to my house, but since I just have two legs and you have three, I'll take a head start. The pot seemed to be staring back at him. It's easy. The house is just down the hill around the corner, he said, nodding at the pot. He was sure it understood his directions. I'm off, he said, and he began to race toward home. When he reached the cottage, he rushed inside and said to his mother, Did I get here first? Juan Bobo's mother looked at her son's sweaty, flushed face and shook her head. What are you talking about? Where is your grandmother's pot? Mother, Juan Bobo said very seriously, that pot has three strong legs and I only have two. So I told the pot I would race it home. Juan Bobo's mother shook her head and sighed. Oh, Juan Bobo, don't you know pots can't walk on their own? You go back and get that pot right now or you'll have no stew at all. Juan Bobo was very upset with his mother, but he longed for that stew. So he ran back up the hill and he found the pot right where he had left it, of course. What kind of lazy pot are you? He shouted. Now I'm in trouble with my mother and I may not have dinner tonight. You have one more chance. Get going down the hill. Naturally, the pot just sat there staring at Juan Bobo and, his, and this infuriated the boy. His usually kind heart began to grow cold and he stared angrily at the pot. One more chance, he warned. The pot did not budge. So Juan Bobo lost his temper and he kicked the pot. It tipped over on its side and began to roll down the hill. That's right, Juan Bobo cried, overjoyed that at last the pot was on its way home. And so the pot and Juan Bobo reached home. Juan Bobo's heart warmed a little, especially later that night, as he ate the delicious chicken stew his mother had cooked inside that pot. In the morning, his mother said, Now, Juan Bobo, take the pot back to your grandmother's house. Juan Bobo looked at the pot and saw that it still had three legs. And even though he was nice and full from that delicious chicken stew, he still had only two legs. But Juan Bobo's heart was compassionate and he knew the pot had worked hard all night cooking that stew. So he picked up the pot and carried it on his shoulder up the hill. But as they walked, he said, next time you'll walk back home on your own, my friend. Nobody is quite sure what happened next time. So that was our story for Juan Bobo and his pot. Um, as you guys can see, he gets into trouble with his mom in this story because he decided that it was a good idea to race a pot down a hill, um, which to most people makes no sense, but to him it does. Um, but nonetheless, the story uh, ends with Juan Bobo realizing that even though the pot was in his mind lazy, it actually worked all night to make the stew for him and his family that his mom was cooking so um at the end of the day he's compassionate he has a big heart and even though he doesn't use his mind very well to make his decisions for him um 
his heart always tends to make the right choice at the very end. So he was able to take the pot back to his grandmother's house. Um, and yeah, I just think that's such a nice way to think back to Puerto Rico and, you know, the culture of eating the, the stew. It's such a, it's such a nice and warm thing to do with the rice and the chicken and the verduras and everything like that. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the story and I will see you guys next time.